this is uh, Chris again. I'm doing something a little different. Uh, this is just a test uh, on a kind of a new way of recording. I have a little bigger uh, whiteboard and I thought perhaps uh, it'd be a little easier to explain some of the more more advanced uh, concepts you know, where I have to do a lot of drawing and, and maybe even a better explanation of the basic concepts. Uh, so I'm just doing a test video to kind of see how this works out and maybe work through some, some kinks and so on. So I appreciate you guys uh, watching in and, and perhaps kind of kind of sticking in there with me while I, I work some of the bugs out. So what I'd like to talk about today are the, uh, the formulae, or some of the essential formulae of respiratory mechanics. And, and really the, the two concepts that I want to talk about are, are, are going to be the concepts of uh, resistance, or airway resistance, sometimes R-A-W, uh, raw, and then the concept of compliance. So, if you guys uh, remember watching any of the uh, videos on uh, ventilator graphics, you know that I talked a little bit about compliance uh, versus resistance uh, when I talked about the, the uh, pressure, some of the, the, the pressure waveforms. Um, <clears throat> I'm just going to kind of redux that real quick and kind of explain the essential concept because I think it's very important that we appreciate the difference between resistance and compliance. So the general way that I, I look at it is that, look, resistance really is about the conduit or the passage into the lungs proper, into the lung parenchyma. So basically what I mean by resistance is I'm talking about the, the actual pipe, if you will, into the airway. Maybe it's the upper airway, maybe it's the lower airways, uh, the main stem bronchi, the terminal bronchioles, so on and so forth. Maybe it's an endotracheal tube that I placed in the airway. Maybe it's a ventilator circuit. Um, any way you look at it, if there's a, a conduit, and, and really what resistance involves is flow, right? Uh, to get air, to get gas into the lungs, I have to have some sort of um, flow through this conduit. And uh, you'll often see that uh, kind of, uh, if you use uh, respiratory formulas, you'll often see that uh, denoted with a V, a big V and a dot on top of it, and that indicates flow. So resistance is just that. It is the resistance to flow. So if I narrow this conduit here, maybe I have some swelling or mucus plug or uh, something on the lines of that, I would expect the resistance to increase um, to the flow of gas. And uh, you, you definitely probably have heard of some of the gas, or not gas laws, but some of the laws of fluid dynamics um, that, that we talk about um, that kind of dictate uh, some of these, these flow patterns. And uh, perhaps I'll talk about those formulas uh, separately um, in another video because I do think they're very important certainly to, to, to at least quantitatively understand what is going on uh, when I have the diameter of a tube and I decrease that diameter through swelling or mucus plug or what have you. What does that do to the resistance? What does that mean? What do I have to do to get or in essence force air through there? Um, so certainly um, there are some laws that we can talk about. One law in particular uh, is very important when it comes to resistance. Okay, so that's resistance. Compliance is more about the lungs themselves. So the conduit basically ends at the alveoli. And we know that the alveoli is, uh, or alveoli is in plural because there are millions of them, is basically a sphere-esque, sphere spherically. Um, it's not a perfect sphere, but basically it's a sphere. Gas flows into it. And when I inhale, due to the effects of a, another gas law, Boyle's law, uh, when I inhale, the sphere expands, opens up, and gas then diffuses across the what's known as the alveolar capillary membrane. Uh, of course, oxygen is going to diffuse with its gradient, hopefully into the the um, the perfusion or the vessels of of the lung parenchyma. 
and carbon dioxide, which is actually being transported as bicarbonate, uh, will then turn back into carbonic acid. Carbonic acid will break down into uh, carbon dioxide and water, and carbon dioxide will diffuse with its gradient out of the, the blood supply. Um, what compliance really is, is compliance is the ability for this alveoli, okay, for this alveoli to expand and to collapse, to expand and collapse. Compliance is related, if basically if you pull a rubber band and it has that elastic property, compliance in elastins, that property known as elastins, are very related. They're actually reciprocal of one another, but you can look at them as, as essentially two, uh, two, two parts of the same concept. So it, it, compliance is sort of how elastic the lung tissue is, how well, compliance really is how well does that lung tissue want to open up. So I'm not talking about getting gas to the airway now. This is resistance. Compliance is actually getting the uh, lung parenchyma, the alveoli, open. So when we say that I have high resistance, so my resistance, my RA, is, is elevated, a very high resistance, that means that something's impeding the flow of gas. If my resistance is low, that means that gas can flow very easily through the conduit. Now, let's not confuse that with the concept of compliance. If my compliance is high, so I have a very high compliance, that means that the alveoli, the lung parenchyma, wants to open up very easily. It's very, it's highly compliant. Now, if my compliance is low, that in essence means that the, the lung tissue, the alveoli, are stiff and they don't want to open. So don't get elevated resistance confused with elevated compliance. They mean actually um, they're almost reciprocal in their meaning. Obviously resistance is talking about the concept of resistance to flow, compliance talking about how the alveoli want to open. Now there are other things that can affect compliance. When I talk about compliance, not only am I talking about compliance here, but I'm talking about compliance of the chest wall. Let's say I receive massive burns, circumferential burns to my chest, and I develop eschar. Well, that chest wall isn't going to want to expand, and that is a compliance issue. Because again, I might be able to get gas flow through the conduit into the lungs, but certainly I won't be able to get them to expand if I have chest wall compliance issue. Um, so, so not only do we have alveoli compliance, we have chest wall compliance, and we even have the abdominal compartment playing a significant role. Uh, something that we see sometimes in the ICUs is people that um, perhaps are uh, victims of a tra traumatic event, and uh, we resuscitate them very aggressively, and then they end up having large fluid shifts. We know that fluid can shift into the abdominal compartment. Our abdominal compartment pressures can, can rise. Abdominal compartment, increasing abdominal compartment pressure, of course, is going to uh, push up on, on the diaphragm, and it is going to make it much harder for that patient to, to inhale. It's going to decrease the compliance. Uh, another concept to understand is that we don't want our lungs to be too compliant. Okay, that is, if I have a lung that is just totally floppy, what's going to happen? Well, I'm going to be able to get air into the lung. It's going to be pretty compliant, get air in there. But I, the lung, because it is so compliant, remember compliance and elastins are, are, are kind of reciprocal of one another. Um, if the compliance is very high, the elastins, the lung actually wanting to, to kind of uh, uh, contract back down is going to be very low. So I can get air in there, and then it doesn't want to exhale. And a good example of a condition where I have too much compliance, I'm, my lungs are too compliant, would be uh, something uh, like chronic obstructive pulmonary disease, a patient with emphysema, where they have destruction of the alveoli, it, it's lost its elastins, and I have just really high compliance, and then I get, what do I get? Well, I get all this, this, this gas trapping, um, air retention, I you know, have prolonged expiratory phases to try to get that air out of there because uh, my elastins 
is so uh, low and my compliance is so high. Obviously, some other things such as inflammation, mucus plugs, and so on uh, play a role in that as well. Okay, so hopefully you guys have a better understanding or better um, intuition for what resistance and compliance um, are. And just a, kind of a kind of a ghetto way of explaining it. Uh, so here I have a bag, a little baggie here. I know this is kind of ghetto, but <laughs> just bear with me here. And then I have a straw here. And the straw, if I blow on the straw, we could pretend that the straw is the conduit, is the, is the airway in, into the alveoli here. So if I blow into this straw here, the resistance is going to be the flow going through this straw. So see how I have a really narrow straw here. Maybe I have some bronchospasm or bronchoconstriction here. Obviously, I'm going to have fairly high resistance, but you can see that this bag has very high compliance, right? It, it doesn't want to go back to its original shape. So I'm going to be able to get air in here uh, quite easily, and what I'll do is I'll just kind of show that to you. And you can see that the compliance is very high. It's so high that uh, air doesn't want to go out. And obviously there's high resistance here because it takes a long time to get the flow of air into the lungs itself. So that is the uh, basic concept behind compliance and resistance. So I think what I'll do in the next video is I'll actually go ahead and talk about the formula proper, or the formulae proper, for describing these two concepts. Thanks, guys.